الحمد للہ رب العالمین و عاقبۃ المتقین ولا عدوان اللہ الظالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد ولا علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله ان اوثنتک حدیث reported by the mother of the believers Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha she said or this is a hadith of Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in which he reported he said the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam neither ate on a dining cloth nor ate soft bread throughout his life ruahu bukhari in this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam or this hadith reported on the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam the hadith of anas radiyallahu ta'ala an in which he narrated that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam he never ate on a cloth nor ate soft soft bread sallallahu alayhi wasallam ahabat fi allah from this hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam we see the simplicity in what the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam existed that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam led a very simplistic life sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that if that's the case for the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then surely we should be able to find contentment with the various means at our disposal another point from this hadith of habita fillah is not only the fact that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived simplistically is that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam could have lived lavishly so that this was a choice not meaning that he put himself through hardship but there were times of hardship and difficulty in which he didn't have the means But the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a consistent lifestyle even when he had the means even when he had the spoils of war even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increased his rizq he sallallahu alaihi wasallam maintained a simple lifestyle he didn't go and transgress the bounds and he stayed well within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so ahabat fillah this is something for us to reflect upon and for us to show contentment for the various types of food and nutrition and means and things that we have acquired and that are at our disposal and that we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's easy for us to become ungrateful and disobedient and for us not to reflect upon the ni'am from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for us to go overboard we have to have the nicest shoes even if we find shoes that are sufficient we have to find we have to have uh, more gold we have to have more lavishness when sometimes we don't even have the basic but we want to get the we want to be extravagant extravagant and which shows the effect materialism has upon us so it's important habit of allah to live within your means and be content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you more and you like nice things there's no harm but it's just to indulge in all the lavish things at the expense of that which is lawful meaning allowing for it to consume your heart 
and to destroy your iman and corrupt your soul and to be away from worshiping Allah Taala and remembering him and doing those things which please him subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's important for the believer to strive to live within his or her means be content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and strive to achieve piety taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because those are the things that last the dunya will go and all the material gains that you gained, all your material gains would, would dissipate. They will disappear. And that's why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, or what is relevant to this discussion, is that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, A dunya, Sijinu Mu'min, with genital kafir. That this life, this dunya, it's the sijin of the mu'min. It's the prison of the believer. And it's the paradise of the disbeliever. The one who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is their paradise. This is it. Because in the hereafter, la shaykh they will be of the khasirin. They will have nothing. They will be destroyed. Wa'iyadhin billah wa'iyakum min al-nar. And for those of you who have experienced death from those people who are close to you and you've inherited things or you've been given things, you see how all of the possessions that your loved one, that they had, and how it, it now belongs to someone else. Now it is being donated. Things that were prized, prized possession. Oh, he used to love so many beautiful watches. Oh, his shoes, look at all these new shoes, some that he never wore. Oh, the pants, oh, this, oh, the garments, oh, the vehicles. All of the things that they possessed, they will go. Those material items won't last. Even the things that are good that help you to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't take them with you. If you have a massive book collection, whatever it is <clears throat> that you have, or whatever you've taken a part in, you can't take it with you. One day it will be donated, or your children were inherited, or whatever the case may be. Or maybe it'll just be lost. So it shows us not to put our hearts, immerse our hearts, to drink from the possessions of the dunya. To just indulge and engage and put our, and to lust and desire the dunya. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of ahl ta'a wa sunnah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam